It's the Premium Pete Show. Pete Show. Pete Show. Welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show. Sitting down with, uh, man, so many things I could say about this uh, person. First of all, uh, uh, just uh, a legendary, uh, and I'm not going to even say people, adult film star. Do we even say film star? Do we say pornos? Do we say a photographer? Do we say there's a lot of things that people don't know about you? You know? Yeah, I feel like they may just <laughs> they just may put it to porn star or adult adult film star, but the one and only the legendary Heather Hunt in the building. Hey, <laughs> first off, straight off the you 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 live in Brooklyn, right? Yes. Okay. Where, where did you grow up? Um, I was born in the Bronx, and I was raised BX. In, yeah, BX, and I was raised Brooklyn and Harlem. I represent Brooklyn. Okay. I got a little Harlem Harlem in me still. <laughs> you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What what uh, what makes you? Uh, Love Brooklyn so much like that, like saying that you... Um, I think, you know, most of my roots, my mother, uh, we live so many different places in Brooklyn. Fort Greene, Bed-Stuy, um, you know, now I live, you know, downtown. <laughs> yeah. Isn't but, it crazy what it's turned out to be? Meaning, yes. meaning like, it's, it's, Brooklyn is different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, it's not what, you know, you know 20 years ago. Oh, my God. If I think of my time when I was living in Fort Greene and just... Party and hanging out in Fort Greene Park and going down to Alby Square Mall with all the other crews from Latin Quarters. You know mm, what I mean? Mm. It has changed dramatically. <laughs> you know, it's really crazy. Um, and but Brooklyn, something about Brooklyn. Brooklyn's tough. I love about. I love this. You know, the vibrance that Brooklyn sure, has. Sure, sure. The borough, man. Yeah, representing for the borough. Yeah. Biggie said that. <laughs> Biggie said that plenty of times. I remember when he went up and, and got an award, and he was like, yo, I'm here representing for the borough. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he meant the Brooklyn. And, you know, a fellow Brooklynite like myself, I, you know, that, that was powerful. Right. You know, I think that's why, too, even in hip-hop sense, people with Jay, you know, people how people feel so... Brooklyn, it was a lot of people from Brooklyn feel like the Jay. Like, yeah, Lil' Kim. Yeah? Yeah, it's just Brooklyn. I mean, how many, think about how many hip-hop songs got BK in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Do you remember the first time you heard your name in, in songs? Yeah, I'm, the first time. Um, it was so, like, yeah, because I've heard it in a few music, a few songs now. But, when yeah, when I, I was really, I felt, it was a high compliment when Little Kim shouted me out, me and my friend Janet Jack, me. Yeah. That was a real high compliment, yeah. you know? Do, do, did you ever get a chance to meet her? Oh, yeah, I know yeah. Kim. Yeah. Uh, a wonderful lady. Fellow she Brooklyn is a queen. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. a special thing, you know. Uh, I want to take it back. You grew up, you grew up in the Bronx, right? Yes. But to mom and dad, uh, mom and dad. Okay. And mm-hmm. what, what did mom do? Uh, my mom worked for United New College Fund. Mm-hmm. You know, she's executive entertainer director, uh, also for fundraising, um, that division. And my father, he was into real estate, and he worked for a church, yeah, Trinity Church in Harlem. Yeah. Now, do you, do you remember like? What the hell you wanted to be when you were growing up? Do you remember that? Um, yeah, I'm pretty much doing that stuff now, which is incredible, you know? Hey, life gets better when you get older. Yeah, in, it's in, crazy when you get, get older, older, you know? I've I just been blessed to be able to, you know, express those things. At least have the journey to do it, you know what I mean? Um, but I think when I'm, I was growing up, I really thought I was going to be an architect. Mm. Uh, I really wanted to design buildings. Um, and then I wanted to go into fashion designing, so... It's interesting um, how my path went. <laughs> but I was introduced to sexuality at a very early age, so was visually. That mean, was that, what does that mean for people who, who listen and who may not done, know that? Well, visually, you know, um, just I've just been around a very fast life when I was younger, you know. Um, and I, I think when you are, when that does impact you at a very young age, you know, you kind of find yourself out in the streets, you know, looking for things, you know what I mean? So um, I think by, which is pretty my, my story, I think, you know, people know that I kind of was a runaway, you know. Um, is there a reason why? Like, you, you, you... Well, I think, you know, back then I was, of course, misunderstood, but at the same time, back then um, I got raped when I was, I, was uh, I, lost, I lost my virginity. That's how I got raped. And that took me on a, crazy path and then I found myself kind of searching for things out in the out in the world at a very young age so from there that's what took me into the adult business I started dancing yeah like a strip club a strip club yeah and and and, and it was 
I mean, obviously, you're making, you know, probably a lot of money or, or, uh-huh. or more, more money than you made as a young, as a young kid, right? Oh, you my know? God. I was like 16, um, making money that I would never, couldn't believe. All my friends were in school and I was... I was bringing really home a clocking. thousand a night. Uh, I was clocking a lot of money weekly. <laughs> yeah, you know. And were and you buying? Were you just like I? You know, you're a kid. You know, you. you I was. I, I think about how much money I spent on myself, my friends, and my family on a diner, just on just nonsense. You know what I mean? Things that if I kind of think back, do I regret it all? No. <laughs> Minx. Because I had a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful time. Yeah. What about shoe collection back then? Was it a shoe collection, like a heel collection, a pump collection? Like I'm it... into Louis. I'm okay. a, I'm a, Even I'm back a... then? Yeah. I was given my first Louis Vuitton when I was 15 years old. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So it became like I'm, 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 I'm a true collector mm. at this point now. Mm. Yeah. So, so you're a runaway. Uh-huh. And, and where, where were you living? Were you just living from um, friends' houses? Crazy. Or? I was living. Sometimes I was uh, staying on a train. Um, sometime I would hang out in Washington Square Park back then. Um, and then I had friends I would crash with, but crazy enough, I used to work for Latin Quarters. Um, I got a job at Latin Quarters and I would actually live there. I would stay there at least a few times a week up on the top floor, you know, Mm. it's interesting. A few people stayed there back in the day. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We were crashing. Yeah. For for people listening who may not know what Latin quarters is, right. take them take them through what exactly from your from your you know from your memory from your experience. Oh my God! What the and, fuck, Latin? Quarters to me, was. Latin was the beginning of Latin quarters was the beginning of the first nightclub that really impacted hip hop. I mean, it was an incredible nightclub. All the hip hop legends that are successful today was birthed from there to me. That was their platform to showcase themselves like Public Enemy, KRS One, the list goes on, Salt and Pepper, Queen Latifah, MC Light. Mm-hmm. Um you had the Rock Steri crew, Crazy Legs, mm-hmm. um IOU dancers, Big Daddy Kane. I mean all of God. us basically came from Latin Quarters. Audio 2, Melk. Audio, Awesome 2, yeah. Red Alert. I can keep naming it, you know? DJ for me, everybody. You know, I think at that time, you know, I used to hang out at Albee Square Mall with Biz Markey and a few other people. And you never really could imagine that this one place that everyone got to showcase at could, it was like, it was like a church to me. So to see the, to see the magical force of how everyone is successful today is amazing to me okay it's really crazy yeah how did now, now, you sleeping in latin quarters uh-huh. you know um i'm sure just trying to figure out life you trying know? to figure it out yeah well do you have any idea what your next step would be um well i knew i had this uh interesting uh power when it came to to embodying, I guess, you know, sexuality, sensuousness. I think I kind of, I saw, I saw and I saw how I affected people. And when I actually saw, I was working in Latin Quarters and I saw an ad in Village Voice and it was for stripping out in Connecticut. I decided to, I was very daring and I was like, okay, let's do it. And I actually went out there. How did you get out to Connecticut? You just took a train or a bus? Uh, I signed up with this agency and I took a train out there. And as soon as I known it, this incredible Italian known family was really molding me and grooming me into uh, what I am today, as you Forget would say. Forget about it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the way you said this you Italian know? family, you said you, you spoke to them like they were this legendary mob family over here. Well, you know, I, 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 you know, my whole thing is like you, you could tell when a, a family is, especially when an Italian family, when they're highly respected, you know, um, even within the community. And you know, I have to, I have to definitely give them their props because they really looked out for me and they, sure. they, you know, they groomed me to at least to me. Um, to have, you know, in this, in this adult industry, at least from the business I used to be in, you know, there is a moral compass that you can have. You know what I mean? 
Sure. And um, I really can take a lot of the things from my people that taught me things, especially that family, of how to carry myself. Yeah. So, so you're in Connecticut, uh-huh. you, you, um, stripping, right? Uh huh. So, so was that like a bar or a, a, it was a, a club. gentleman's club? Yeah, it was a gentleman's club. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and how was that experience? Like, were you I was shy crazy. or nervous? Or? Uh, no, I was really nervous because back then I didn't even have high heels. I was actually. Uh, stripping in sneakers. Converse? Yeah. <laughs> I had little skips on, you know. <laughs> but, you know, the guys thought it was hot, you know. <laughs> and it was it was a great experience. I felt really, I felt liberated. It was a, a liberating feeling. Now, was there lap, was lap dances big at that time? Yeah, lap dances were big. No sex in the champagne room? No, you know, but, you know, you have to understand, I, I was also, you got to, Remember, I was underage, so mm-hmm. I was only able to dance I'm on... I'm sure they didn't even know, uh, guys in there. Well, they knew later when they kept realizing my birthday was staying at the same number. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they knew, but they actually had me... Whenever I would do my show, I would go downstairs and just stay downstairs in the dressing room. I was never allowed on the floor or the bar. Mm. Yeah, until I came of age, as you would say. Crazy. There's some sort of rules. You know? yeah. It, 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 yeah. Even in the even in a different type of world. Well, and that and back in that day, you know, now I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe there's that much respect. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So so here you are again. First we talk about Latin quarters. Uh huh. Then you're over in Connecticut, the strip club. Right. How long did you stay there? Um, I was going back like every other two weeks or three weeks. <laughs> Mm. You know, and then I was Good still money. working. Great money. And then I was still hanging out and working at Latin Quarters. Uh, that was basically my, my home, my second home. Mm. Yeah. So how did you, what, what was your next step to like even getting in the adult industry? Well, that's when I was working at the club. And then a porn star, Hayapisha Lee, she came in to feature. And I was considered like the house dancer, the star house dancer of the club. And she kept telling me, she said, you, you, you have something. You shouldn't be here. You should really, you should be doing films, you know? And pretty much how I was kind of like a soldier already, <laughs> you know? I was like, okay, you know? So we waited till my 18th birthday. And on my birthday, I did my first film. Mm. Yeah. Now, now if, if see, that, that, that for most people... Probably don't even know, like, mm-hmm. you know, the feelings of that. Or, 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 or were you nervous of that? Like, kind of like I was asking you with the strip club, but what was your... Because that's the thing, too. I remember, you know, I've known a lot of different porn stars or mm-hmm. adult stars, whatever you want to... You don't feel disrespectful if I say porn star, right? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just asking. I'm being respectful yeah, to yeah, you. definitely. And listen, OG Brooklyn Knight, man, come on. <laughs> um, you know, the you know, um, reason why I say that for is because... I know a bunch, and I would talk to them, and people don't understand. It's not easy where you turn on the lights, like, fuck, stop. You know, you, fuck, stop. Like, you know, it's like, it's a difficult task. Like, it's not like people think, like, it's all so fun, like, sexual only. Right. When there's lights on you to perform, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, you know, you stop or go or stop or go. I mean, come on. Yeah. Most people are three pumps and gun. They want to, they can't do no porno. Right. I mean, there's no, you don't, you can't get excited when you're doing a film. It's, I mean... You're really acting, you know. Um, of course, you're probably enjoying certain moments, uh, uh, but Walk us it's through your really first time. my first time. I could say I was I was definitely nervous, especially because um, I already considered myself bisexual, but I never touched a woman before. So that was actually the first time I actually touched a woman. It was on my first film, um, and it was with this girl named Busty Bell, and. I was nervous. <laughs> I never even, never even held a vibrator before, you know. And now they're like, here, do your thing. And, you know, she really guided me through it. Uh, and it just, I just dived in. I mean, honestly, it's like an out-of-body experience. You kind of have to really detach yourself from the whole thing. And I was capable of doing that. And I think throughout my whole time even from dancing, even from doing a porno film. The only reason why I was able to detach myself from it was because I was abused before. Do you know what I mean? So when you're like, when, when, when you're raped, it's like 
it's something that you don't want. So while someone is attacking you, you have to feel like you're detached from the whole situation just so you, you, you don't get so affected from it. And I think from that experience, that took me into a, a power situation where it's like, okay, I'm going to take over my sexuality. I'm going to control how I make a person feel, how I stimulate them versus them stimulating me. You know what I mean? So when I got into the, when I started dancing, it was easy to dance because I was creating this, this sexual power and it was all in my control, you know? So if you go into the porno, it was easy to detach yourself from any situation. So I kind of danced through my experience in the porno business. Mm. It really did. It seems like it was like, I was aloof through the whole experience. You know what I mean? Your first time was with a girl? First time was with a girl. So, and, and how much is something like that, you know, like at that time? Do you remember? To be with a girl? No, like how much did you get for that, like, first uh, film you did? Oh, well, I was contracted. I was contracted with Vivid. So I really Vivid not... Video, the legendary Well, video. I was actually with Vidway first. Okay. And then I was contracted with Vivid, Vidway, and then I was contracted with Vivid. But um, back then, my God, with Vidway, um, I was I was kind of played by movie, not really by scene. You know, I can't really discuss my <laughs> the money, you know, the money situation. But um, definitely, when I got to Vivid, it was even more. <laughs> you know, Viv- Vivid was definitely paying us a very high. Now, don't you? I, I used to say this all the time that. Porn stars should have like residuals, uh-huh. kind of like artists, you know, get royalties. Right. Well, Vivid you gave you the option. Oh, really? Vivid gave you the option. You could like have, the back end. And then you could have vis- pun yeah. intended. Right? <laughs> yeah, you can have a percentage, or you can get paid flat fee. You okay. know. So did you ever take a? No, nah, I just went flat fee. Give me the money. Give me the money. Give me the loot. Give me the money. Um, but you know, now I sit back and think about it. Man, I should have took that percentage. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, um, now when you, your second time, you, when did you do it with a guy? Did you do? No, in the same day. Okay, same yeah, day. Same day. So, so, yeah. so, just so people understand, I would love to, un, you know, understand more of. The- and then I was a, you know, I, I was, I was actually enjoying myself. You know, you have a moments of you're caught up in this, in the excitement of it all. Yeah, you know? it really is. You can really get caught up. <laughs> yeah. In the, now, yeah. You, mean, you mean as far as like lust, like and, 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 and sexual, like horny? like Yeah, like you that. can really yeah. get caught up in the, just the whole glitz of it. Because you've been involved in that uh-huh. industry of uh, sex and sexual, uh, is, is sex still fun for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it don't wear out. Are you kidding me? I have to cage myself up, you know? <laughs> Yeah. 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 It's just to me is now sex is even more incredible because I appreciate it more, mm. you know, um, and I now it's not even about sex. It's about making love. I'm really, you know, I appreciate, you know, pleasing and being pleased by my significant other. You know sure. what I mean? Sure. Yeah. You know, because I, I could truly say that I could look at my life and I could say, damn, you know, I could I really kind of over abuse uh, sex in, in a way where you got to kind of step back and go, okay, let me respect this, you know? Yeah. Did you, were you, you ever did like a, a scene that you, was weird for you or something that you didn't want to do, you know? Yeah, I had to do a scene. Um, I forgot his name. Um, he was an older gentleman, and I really was not into him. And he was a little bit too older for me, you know? I, I just didn't want to do the scene with him. Something about him, the energy, I can't remember. But uh, I had to do the scene. You know, I was contracted to do it. And once again, I'm detaching myself and getting the job done because this is work, you know? Sure. Yeah. Did you ever sleep with Ron Jeremy? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. He you know, was in one of my movies. That dude slept with. Uh, he was actually in my first movie. Really? I met him on the first. Ron Jeremy is my first film. I met him. He helped me blow out my my birthday candles. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That dude's a legend. Uh-huh. In the game. I love Ron. Great yeah. guy. Yeah. What, what about uh, Peter North? Oh yes, me and Peter worked. We were fond of each other. Yeah, we worked a lot. You I know, worked a lot with Peter. I love Peter. You know, it's funny. Uh, I remember that guy growing up. Um, 
from watching porn. And, and, and it's funny. I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that dude, uh, <laughs> when, he, when, when, he, when he came, I mean, it was like the, it, 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 it was like the biggest. Oh, my God. It was like, yeah. I was like, yo, I he remember saying that. He was exploding. Like, yeah. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. I used to count his shots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was like, yo, I, I, I got to get like this dude. And because and, and, he would shoot across the room, you know? Uh-huh. And I was like, this <laughs> motherfucker had a pistol on him, you know? It's but, crazy. But, you know, um, so as you, 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 first of all, I want to go to, you speak about getting raped when you were young. Right. And, and, and it seems like after all these years, you know, you, you really found yourself. Like how you speak uh-huh. about finding balance between being pleased and pleasing. Right. Have you ever gone to therapy uh, because of any? Oh, when I was younger, definitely. When all, I, was, I was in therapy before I even got raped. <laughs> um, but it was, at this point now, I've, it's been so many years. Um, even, I think, you know, a few years after that, I really, f- I forgive them, you know? I forgive that person, you know? Um, it's, I, I choose not to be a victim. Um, it definitely wasn't my fault, you know? Um, I definitely realized that throughout the years. And, yeah, I'm, you know, it's just about just being true to yourself and going on with life, you know what I mean? And not letting anything get in your way or emotion or things to stop you from doing what you got to do in life or love who you got to love in life. You know, you, you spoke about mom and uh, dad growing up. with them, uh-huh. right? But uh, things, obviously, you ran away and stuff like that. But did you have a good relationship with them? Yeah, I had a good relationship with both of my mom. Of course, when I was younger, you know, my mom clashed with so much alike. Um, my father, incredible man, you know, rest in peace. Um, you know, there's so much stuff that I'm, I'm, I've been through within my entire life. Right now, I'm actually shooting my life documentary film. Mm. I'm in production as we speak right now. Um, so there's so many things I'm going to express, you know, when, I, when I, I'm actually doing the film. But, yeah, I've had so many different experiences with my family, just with life in general. I mean, with I talk about journeys just through so many people I've met in my lifetime, you know? Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we got to wait for that. <laughs> now, now when, when you went to, you know, strip clubs uh-huh. and, and, and then in the, you know, porno industry, mm-hmm. was mom or pops, like, flipping out or were they upset? Well, by that time, I was, I was living on my own, you know? Did they ever um, reach out to you? And- oh, yeah. You know, the best thing about my family, they've always been as supportive. Um, of course, I, you know, when you're young and hard-headed, you're not listening, so you keep running. You think you know it all. You know what I mean? And I was one of those kids. And any lesson I had to learn, it was my responsibility because I wouldn't listen. You know what I mean? And I realize that now. You know, even then, I realized that. Sure. So any decision that I move forward, even if I was stripping, even if I was in adult films, all those decisions were my decision. And uh, I know the difference between right and wrong. Uh, to me at that time, it was right, you know, and even yeah. if I look back at my life, you know, I wouldn't be who I am today, uh, just all the experiences that I've been through, you know. You know, you you, you have a lot of other talents besides uh-huh. being a porn star. Right. You know, some people, yeah. I, I'm i not a fan of people who just think of a person, like I'm not just a podcaster, uh-huh. do a thousand other things, you know, you're not just a porn star. Right. Do you feel it's hard to shed the porn star image? Um, honestly, I don't really care to shed it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Everybody asks me that question. Um, you know, you have, you know, you live in this world where we are so wishy-washy. Sure. And so hypocritical. Sure. Uh, I could be hypocritical as well. And we live in a judgmental world. You know, one minute we're just like, woo, we're happy about sex. One Next minute, oh, this is taboo. This is bad. You know what I mean? Um, I choose to embrace everything of who I am. Um, even the porno business, you know, mm. that's my mm. my second family. Um, to me, I, I, I want all of everybody to be successful. I think, you know, just in the form of entertainment, if you do something too long, they try to pigeonhole you. Sure, sure. You know, and they Put try to... box. Right, and they try to mentally condition you to stay there. And I, I refuse to be that one. I've never... Mm. Yeah, I'm not mm. standing in line. And you're still not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just not that cat. <laughs> you, you, you mentioned contract, right? Uh-huh. I, I just want to understand because I don't even... I, it's interesting to me. So you don't get paid by film? 
So what do you get, like a salary to do a certain amount of like... Well, when I was assigned with Vivid, I would do like probably six to eight movies a year when I did. Only done about 45 altogether. Mm. Um, and they would pay you for those amount, that amount. And that was it. They nope. would pay you up front. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. So... And so, so now was Heather Hunter your full? Your, yeah, that's your my full real name. name. Really? Yeah, Heather that's a Hunter. beautiful goddamn name. Thank you. <laughs> it, it sounds good, and it looks good on a jersey. Have you ever got it on a jersey? No, no. <laughs> you should have been swagging that out. Oh uh, no. <laughs> on, a, on a football jersey or a basketball jersey, Hunter in the back. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not a bad thing. The only thing would have been crazy if you would have went to a Hunter College. I know my sister. One of my say sister well, did. Say hello, brother Chris. Hi, Chris. He's How a shooter. Doing? Not that, don't do not shoot. Only the camera. Don't shoot anything. <laughs> uh, uh, you know. You understand? Change it. <laughs> Change it. Change it. Change uh, it. <laughs> so so uh, where were we? Where the fuck were we? Oh, so okay. So they have a contract. So you're saying you only did what forty five uh, films? Really? Uh huh. So so that means just as far as like full length films, or means like uh, uh, parts in having sex or stuff like that? No, just films like. As many films that I signed up for mm. throughout my career, and then the rest have kind of they blown at least up to sixty total of sixty movies of mine, mm-hmm. just of compilations. Yeah. So, so you have to. Uh, what about like uh, if they say you have to? Could you refuse like say anal or? Well, or, I never did anal. Or threesomes or foursomes or. Yeah, you, you know when you first go into you know you tell them what you're into and what you you're willing to do. Um, I never passed. Three guys? Yeah, I never passed three guys. Mm. I never done anal, you know. Um, it was interesting because I used to be I used to be enticed by the companies in Europe to come out there, you know. And I just it's just not something I'm into. Don't get me wrong, you know? yeah. It's just something I'm not into. I, I'm not, I'm not wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, at the time, if you say no, did you feel that hurt you? Like me? No, like, I didn't really business? care. Yeah. Uh-uh. I even wore condoms as soon as you know HIV came to rise. Immediately, they gave us the option if you want to wear condoms or not. You know, they said it might, you know, kill your sales in certain ways, but I didn't care. I'm like, oh, let's put that rubber on, <laughs> you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. And it didn't kill my sales. No? Yeah. Mm-mm. Now, in, 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 the, in the porno business, you know, uh, obviously there is definitely like STDs transmitted and stuff like uh-huh. that. It, were you able to stay away from that, you know, with all the kind of, you know, condoms? Oh, my God. I think, you know, in general, you know, you, I, I thank God I I didn't get anything that you know throughout my lifetime that I couldn't get rid of. <laughs> you know? Sure, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> not not to take two take two of these. Call me in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, uh, Tupac, right? Uh huh. I mean, so many people. I mean, well, people who do know or don't know, but Tupac. Mm-hmm. You know, where did you meet Pac, man? Um, I met Pac. He actually crashed my album release party at the country club um i put an album out uh with island records called i want it all night long the single you were rapping i was singing house music at that time yeah and yeah he crashed my party that's how i met him do you still sing uh you know at home when i'm horny you know (laughs) can we hear something (laughs) i need to hear the high note like you in church (laughs) okay you know um yeah he, he just ran up on me did he know you? Did he know somebody in your camp? Yeah, he knew He knew me. Yeah, he just ran up at me. He was impressive. He was charming. Very charming. Um, to the point that the energy, we just, chemistry immediately clicked. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. as soon as I've known it, like, I, I was I was in, you know, built a, a great bond. And as soon as I know it, I was in California riding a bull. And how do you want it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Did y'all mess with each other? <laughs> you know, I'm always asked this. I'm always asked this question. I always asked. Ain't question. nothing wrong with it. No, nah, you know, I'm always asked this. He's my dear friend. You know, rest in peace. Once to again, you know, I think back to him saying when my my life documentary comes out, I'm really going to express even the experience throughout. You know. The how do you want it video? Just you know, I'm really going to express a lot of things. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, because at, at this point now, you know, I'm, I'm about to turn fifty this year. Fabulous! You look thank great. Thank you, thank you. And you know, I just really want to express myself and leave a mark and for people because I'm a very private person. Sure. And I really want people to truly know who I am versus assuming. Sure. You know, and you get to tell it all. Yeah. You get to narrate it. You get to get yeah. this. Get to, you know. 
speak your existence mm-hmm. and what you want people to know. Right. It'll be a great thing. Yeah, when do you think it'll be coming out? Um, 2020. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Hopefully we have a new president, too. <laughs> new documentary by Heather Hunter and a new motherfucking president. <laughs> and is that the time you're going to tell people that you had this, like, you know, crazy relationship with Tupac? <laughs> I'm already playing. I'm already playing. I know you're poking me. You keep poking me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. It's all good. It, it, it ain't that serious. Let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. Um, the Me Too movement has changed the meaning of some words. Yes. And the way, you know, things are, the way, the way, the way people act. Mm-hmm. You know, what's your thoughts on the Me Too movement? The Me Too movement. Um, I've been part of that movement from the beginning of time, I guess, when I got into this business. Uh, just speaking of my past, you know, um, you know, we live in a very sad, sad world right now. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, to me, when it, when it comes to women, it's really hard to fight if, if some, if, if you do, if you can't be heard, you know what I mean? It's like, you can, you could speak your mind and you could express things that have happened through you to, to you through your lifetime. And, no matter how much you express yourself, it seems like, you know, people just want you to shut up, you know? And I think this is important that we do have this Me Too movement right now. It's very important. Um, And what I feel about what's happening right now with people being sexually harassed, you know, this has been going on from the beginning of time. It's been going on. And, you know, when it comes to certain people's lives, you know, Judgment Day comes. And it's unfortunate, but, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword, in a sense. You know what I mean? And I'm really happy that there are women out there speaking up, even men, you know, because it's not just a woman thing. It's, it's, you know, abuse and harassment, all that is a human, humanity, it's a, hum, it's a human problem. Sure. Yeah. Even, even pay. Even, yeah. Even pay, like, you know, yeah. why, why should that be different? Do you feel, even though I know the porno industry... Mm-hmm. Is you still cons- <clears throat> consider them your family? Yes. But as a woman, did you feel the difference that men were treated in that industry? You know, because you went from the beginning early on, right? I mean, even like you know, you look at that. You know, if you look at you talking about as in pay, pay, um, you know, uh, power in a sense of if you didn't want to do something, I didn't like it. You know, well, it's crazy because if you look at in, if you look at the heterosexual part of the industry. Either men were underpaid. Of course, the women were paid more. And I think that's wrong because we're all doing the same thing. You know, we're lying down, risking our lives, you know. Um, so I think everyone should be paid, you know. But if you look at the gay industry, the men in that business were sometimes getting paid more than the women in the straight industry. So, you know, I think, you know, all the way around, I was talking about this earlier, I just think we should have, when they say equal rights, it should be equal rights for men and women sure. across the board. Because sure. this is like ridiculous, you know. Um, but we live in a backwards world. I always say that. Um, will it change? I doubt it. Um, but if you keep fighting and keep standing up, you know, a difference can be made. You sure, know? sure, yeah. sure. You know, you 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 retired what nineteen ninety nine? Is that do you, do you no nineteen ninety three? Okay, so you were only in like you were saying before what for a couple of years? Yeah, a couple of years. Now, why is that? Why did you retire? Um, I got out of the business. Um, it's so funny. I always keep saying this, but I got out of the business when, um, of course, when HIV came arise, um, and then I looked at my taxes after clearing taxes and doing films. It just wasn't worth risking my life sure. for this. And I was really getting to that point where I was kind of, it was starting to affect me, the business. I was starting to catch feelings. Um, and for I think people? For people, for myself, you know what I mean? I was really becoming, I was waking up. I, I call it a wake up. Um, like depressed? Or? No, I was just growing up. I was growing out of that situation. And instead of fighting it and staying in it, I... I kind of walked away from it, you know, because I wanted to do other things with my life. So it was more or less like everybody said, well, well, you just did porn. I was like, okay, so what? <laughs> you know, like, well, it's going to be hard for you to do other things. I was like, well, let's see. And I, I really, I kept it moving. I stuck to my guns. It was really 
I didn't go back. How did you survive? Um, I was still dancing for a second, and then I stopped dancing. And then I got a uh, a gig with BT uh, doing uh, the Luke's Peep show. The Luke's Peep show. Mm-hmm. And when Luke stepped out, I became the host of the show. And a few other things kept coming in. A lot of mainstream stuff came in. I had a lot of celebrity supportive friends that really did not want me to go back into the business and really helped me along the way to produce my music. I got a record deal. You know, things were just happening and breaking through for me in the mainstream entertainment. And I just kept following the ride and kept going. How did you maintain a lot of those in your know, you know, celebrity relationships? Because I, it's funny. I, mm-hmm. I, when I think back, I remember you did have a lot of support from a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people fucked with you. Right. Uh, yeah, know. to this day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not pun intended. No. You know, just, uh-uh. they fuck yeah, with they you. Fuck you. With yeah. Me. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. why do you think that was that? Just genuine? Just um, Back to the roots, you know. We all came from the same streets. Um, a lot of them my big brothers. You know, if I think of Awesome 2 and Red Alert and just, I could name everybody. Kane, everybody. They looked out for me. These are like my brothers and um, from Latin Quarters and... You know, back then, the difference between the girls and hip-hop now, back in the day, you, you were treated equal. You mm. were a B-girl. I'm still a B-girl at heart, you know? So when they claim you as your, your family, you're really family. And um, that's exactly what it is now, you know? It's really hard for the girls in the business right now to find cliques because... The guys are on for themselves, sure. you sure, know sure. what I mean? Sure. Yeah, they got their, their boys in the crew. It's really hard. It's hard for even just a female girl out here in hip-hop. It's really hard. So the ones that are successful, you know, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. When was the last time a man impressed you? Uh, <laughs> recently. <laughs> how? How, uh, how did they impress you? Especially because, you know why you, know uh-huh. why I, you know why I say this shit? I say it because... You've been to the circus. Uh-huh. You've seen all the clowns. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, takes, it takes a little bit more to, say, impress somebody who's seen, seen, you know, all the clowns. That's true. I think, you know, when you're dealing with me personally, I think um, I just like a gentleman, you know. It's the simplest, smallest things that a man can do that can really get me excited and entice me, you know. And, uh, yeah, I just got that. <laughs> now, didn't you have a cartoon? Uh-huh, Bulletproof Diva. Now, were, were, you the first, uh, uh, were you the first to have one, like, as far as in the porn industry? or? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Really? Uh-huh. How did that happen? Um, I was actually signed to UBO, George Jackson. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember George Jackson. Great uh, producer. Uh, he did uh, also executive like producer for, uh, I believe, the movie Sugar Hill, uh, New Jack City. Uh, he passed away, unfortunately. Rest in peace. Love George. Um, he had he had a company called UBO, Urban um, Box Office, uh, and they created Bulletproof Diva with me, based off of my my cartoon Super Pussy. Mm. Super so, Pussy. Yeah. Who the fuck came up with these names? I did. I had to, you know because I draw, you know. Um, Super Pussy. Yeah. So I had this character called Super Pussy. And George turned it into Bulletproof Diva. What, what was yeah. uh, Super Pussy's superpowers? Her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man! Say, say, say no more. Man, yeah. Are, when was the, are you in a relationship? Or when's the last time you were in a relationship? I'm in a relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How's that going? Great. Really good one. Mm. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm really happy about this one because I kind of got it right. You know what I mean? Finally. Sure, sure. Yeah, I kind of got it right. You know, it's important not to give up on that. Sometimes uh-huh. we, get, we get scarred from old shit. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you know somebody will hurt you, and then you'll think automatically the next person. You know, we we have our guards up. You yeah, know what I mean? you know, I was in a long I was in a a very long relationship for for a lot of years, and I I it, I was single for at least two years now, but now I'm with somebody right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, weren't you dating Mr. Marcus for a while? When That's when I did films. When It's so funny. When I was working for Vivid, he came in onto one of my films. and um, no, I was pun, like, no pun intended. No pun intended. And I was like, oh, my God, he's a little cutie. And it was actually his first film. And we, once, once again, chemistry. I didn't feel like I was working that day. And <laughs> 
And then we started kicking it. Yeah, we kicked it for at least about a year. Mm. Uh huh. Is it hard to have? But room? then I retired. Okay. Yeah. And is, is that part of the reason why you retired? Being with some, being with him, and and having feelings for him, and no, because I had a few feelings for a few male porn stars that I dated. I've dated Shawn Michaels, uh, Randy Spears, uh, John Doe. He passed away. I dated uh, John Doe. Um, no, when I retired from the business, I kind of didn't look back. And I was even, I actually was out of the business about six or seven months. And then I met my husband. I got married. Mm. It was the first time. Why'd you get married, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I actually... He swept me off my feet, you know, um, incredible guy. And, but back then, I was so young. I was like 23 years old. Um, I could truly say I didn't know what it was. to. I didn't know what it is to be in a, sure. a real relationship. I was still learning. And um, I think at that time, I didn't really think I deserved him at that time, you know. I was kind of trying to figure myself out, you know. And incredible guy, you know. We're still friends to this day. Great guy. And, you know, I just think I was married for like a year. Mm. Yeah. I did too, so don't worry. Yeah. I ain't judging you. But the funny, <laughs> the funny thing is even like my family, like we have, I have a lot of big heavy hitters, man. My mm. mother and father just celebrated 50 years marriage. So I remember like when I got divorced after two years, mm-hmm. this is a while ago, so they were like 30 or some 35 or whatever. I was like, damn, I feel like a failure compared to the, cause compared to, yeah. But you know what it is? It, it it it's like you know it was too. I was too. I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. And I just happened to just go with the flow. Mm-hmm. And uh, it took me a long time to ever. You know, it left a lot of bit of taste in, in my mouth. You know, as far as divorce, like right. it just was like yeah. Yeah, I think I was engaged at least about four times after that. Now no kids. And I never. Yeah, I never. I just never made it to the altar. I just. I kept it like it was like a runaway bride. Yeah. I yeah, kept yeah. running. You yeah, know? cool feet. Yeah. Now, no kids? Yeah, no kids yet. Really? Yeah, yeah. Did you ever want to? The word to? yet. Did you want, <laughs> okay, okay. Did you ever want to? Uh, um, Still do. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> hey, listen, you know. It, yeah. <laughs> it, and anything is possible. Yes, indeed. You know, you know what? Let's take a quick break. We're sitting here with the one and only, the legendary, Heather Hunter. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Cheer. Internet's and we're back sitting here with Heather Hunter. Going over the journey. Okay, yes. going over everything from stripping to porn industry to leaving the porn industry mm-hmm. to still making it to to Tupac to everything. You know, we we're talking about um, um, Ron Jeremy and how old he is now. Mm-hmm. He was saying he was sixty nine. I'm he, thinking he's sixty nine. Well, Close to that. <laughs> he, he, he could be seventy. Yeah. <laughs> do Do you do conventions like you know how they have those like porno? Uh, uh, no, I don't do them anymore. Expos. What, what is it even called? Um, you have the AVN, and then you have the Exotica. So fans come up to you, sign autographs. And Exotica. The last uh, time I did, I did the Legends, and I was like five years ago, six years ago. Probably even longer than that. Is but it, no, I don't, don't do them anymore. You don't want to do them, is it? Um, it's exciting to be in it, but you know, it's like as soon as you like go in that circle, I know where your fans think you're coming back. You yeah. know? <laughs> and I don't want, you know, I don't want that st- them to get that impression that that's going to happen. Yeah. You know, you know what's so funny about... It'd be good if I could just go and hang, but, you know, yeah. people are like, oh, my God, she's back. Yeah, she's, she's coming back. She's sucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what's... I'm so- like, no, I'm not. <laughs> no more sucking dick. No more sucking dick. <laughs> you, 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 you know what's funny? Uh, uh, people, when they think of porn stars, and, uh-huh. particularly, and you're an OG in the game, straight mm-hmm. up. Uh, even mm-hmm. though you didn't stay long in it, but you're an OG. No, I, I, yeah, I'm OG with sex when it comes to sex. Exactly. When <laughs> yeah. it comes to sex. When it so, comes to sex. <laughs> so think, think about this. When I remember telling people, like, oh, you remember Heather Hunter? Mm-hmm. And people like, you know how crazy it is? People like, oh, yeah, I jerked off to her. Uh-huh. You ever hear that from people? Yeah, you know, my classic line is, you know, I, I don't know where that fan it is. That fan, wherever you are. I mean, you know, that was really kudos. He used to say to me, he's like, I jerked off, you know, I was... I was locked up and I jerked off to you. You should be pregnant by now. You should be like, <laughs> you should have like at least 10 of my babies. I'm looking at him like, wow, that's deep. That's deep. <laughs> you know? Now, do, do, do you remember like one of the craziest or weirdest places you've ever been recognized? Um, the weirdest place I've been recognized. I don't know. 
I'm always recognized somewhere. You know, it's always that person that looks at me and go, oh, you know. To me, it's the odd ones. It's like that really goody-two-looking housewife who just, you know, looks like she's just so innocent, you know. <laughs> and then she realized who I am. And then, I, you know, I know her tea at that point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she's like, oh, that's Heather Hunter. Yeah. You know, you mentioned before the most you ever did was three guys. Uh-huh. Not that I would <clears throat> know, but how, how was that? You know, like meaning like how? It was busy. <laughs> it was actually exhausting. Um, actually, it was, a, to me, it was it was fun in the beginning. But then when you start going into like 15 minutes of it, it was kind of like, okay, it's a lot to handle here. Mm. Um, but I can say definitely when it came down to the pop shot, that was funny because, you know, when you're doing a scene with, like, three straight guys, everybody's scared to pop, and they scared to pop on each other, so everybody's jumping. So I got, like, stuff flying in the air. <laughs> yeah, I got <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Memories. <laughs> Am I bringing you back in? Oh, I got some flashbacks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so funny because that movie was called The End. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. You, you, you know, remember when I said before, like, it's not as easy as people think porn. Like, you know, the lights are, are on you and they're like, stop, yeah. stop, cut or, or fuck. Or, or, right. Uh, I'm not saying they use those words, but right. I'm sure they say, all right, go ahead. Right. Uh-huh. Was there a lot of times where, you know, it was hard to get, you know, excited for that or, or, or even guys like would, would have to get up for that? Oh, yeah. You know, there was times when um, even when I was working with a guy and he couldn't even get it up. He was so excited. He was actually a Chippendales dancer. It was his first films, and he couldn't get it up, and we couldn't waste any more time, so they actually had a call in a stunt dick, a guy who had a dick that looked like his. What the fuck? And that guy came in, and he did the pop shot, and then we were all able to go home. Um, Things like that, you know, there's been some uncomfortable situations where you're just like, you're just not in the mood, you know? That's why I say it's a job, you know? Sure. Because some days you're just not in the mood. And even you get, yeah. your, you get your period, right? Oh, my God. I remember the first time I got my period on the set. I was really, like, shocked because everybody else was, like, acting like it was normal. And I was kind of like, wait a minute. This is kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This oh, is kind of intimate. This sure. is personal, I, you know? And, it, and I really got upset. I was really upset. I had to really leave the set for a second because I couldn't believe that this person was reacting like, come on, let's keep it, let's get it, get it going, you know? Yeah. And then I realized, you know, then I learned the trick. That was the first day that I learned the trick of how you stop your period. Life hack, let me hear you it. You know. <laughs> oh, you want to hear it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll give the tip. All right. Even ladies, y'all really need to know this. Even... Um, even if you're not doing porn, this is good for you and your mate, you know, if you got your period. You actually, um, you take a sea sponge and you, you cut it into a circle. You lightly uh, moist it with water and then you stick it all the way inside you. And that actually stops the flow for you to have a good evening with your significant other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some yeah. people are like, damn, I just go, some people go through the red light. You know? <laughs> Some people do do that. Yeah, but, you know, it's good to know that you have a tip. There's options, you know. Now, how do you, you know, being that, you know, you've been in the industry and, and that you, I guess, you know, you could consider being like a professional person as far as like being involved in sex. Uh-huh. How do you keep it, it you know, what, what advice would you give to people in a relationship to keep it steamy? And, and more importantly, just keep it like, you know, because shit dies mm-hmm. down. You know, shit dies down for people. Right. Well, I definitely could say um, for a long-lasting relationship, definitely keep stimulating each other. If you, your partner tells you this is what they're into, try it. Because if you don't try it, they're going to seek it from someone else. Um, be open with each other. You know what I mean? Um, the most closest thing you can be with somebody is sharing that really kinky experience together so y'all don't look elsewhere. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, and I, you know, I, I could truly say like, you know, sex is to me now, sex is very sacred. You know what I mean? 
Um, so it's all about what you're into. And if someone's into something and you're not into them, like what they're into, you really need to let that person go, mm. you know, because you're, you're fooling yourself in that relationship. You know, if somebody's into anal and you're not into anal, that relationship is not going to work. You feel mm. me? Because <laughs> that's what that person's going to want. True. On a regular and you basis. And you'll, you'll get it somewhere else. Right, right. Yeah. You know? What's up with toys? Are you into toys? I'm into toys, but I'm I'm really aggressive. So I like using toys on other people. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, okay. They really don't do anything for me because I'm so highly sensitive. Mm. And, you know, I can get aroused by the wind pretty much. <laughs> really, it's crazy. She said aroused by the wind. Yeah. <laughs> you, when you better not go outside tonight then. Oh, yeah. Because it's no. fucking cold as yeah. a motherfucker. Trust me, I, I feel it. you walking through the streets all gas <laughs> all over the fucking place. I'm just sitting here, just even this conversation. I'm, you know, yeah. yeah, I get stimulated. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, it could be my voice, you know. <laughs> I, you, now, 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 let me ask you. Well, as you sit back and, and, and mm-hmm. you think of, of, you know, the days in, in, in the industry, mm-hmm. you still have friends that you keep t- t- till today? Oh, yeah. You know, Janet Jackman is like my best friend. Really? Even though she's not in the business anymore. But like Misty Stone, there's certain people that, the new girls that are in the business right now, I know a few of them. Um, but I, I love Naomi Banks, Misty Stone. Um, Misty Stone is... Brittany Andrews. Powerful. Yeah. You know, I can... So many people that I know that's in the business that I truly, Nina Hartley, I love them all, mm. honestly. Um, and even the new girls, when I do meet them, you know, I, I'm, I, I try to give them as much support and advice and you know what i mean sure you're like yeah. the triple og uh in the game yeah i'm like That's, the mother in the yeah, shoe yeah. the madame yeah <laughs> you know n- n- now that uh we spoke about photography mm-hmm. before yes now, my photography were yes. you always into being a photographer like did you have mm-hmm. like a camera at, a, at you know years ago like that you used to shoot all the time no like, i was shooting all the time before and i realized that i should have been doing photography a long time ago but I was painting. Um, I had my art gallery, which I still have in Dumbo, Brooklyn. Um, I decided to pick up a skill. You know, Obama was like, pick up a skill. And that was like about 10 years ago. Um, and I went to New York Institute Photography School. And I did a complete course in photography. Got on the honor roll. Did a commercial to help enroll students into the school. It was really a good experience. And from that... I learned how to do graphics, retouching, Photoshop. Um, I love photography. That's like my passion right mm. now. I have a photography studio in Dumbo. It's called H2 Art Studios. So, so are you, do you have any shows there? Uh, yeah, I do. Actually, right now, I don't have a show right now. I'm actually shooting a lot during the winter. But during the summertime, I'll have a show. Yeah, mm-hmm. and on Instagram it's it's uh, it's Hunter Heather. Yeah, my name backward on okay. Twitter, Instagram is Hunter Heather at Hunter Hunter. Well, where's Heather Hunter? Who the fuck has Heather Hunter? Give it up! <laughs> Stop playing around. Okay? I know. When I first got Instagram, I, I thought I was gonna hide. Yeah, you know, it'd be funny yeah. if a fan grabbed it. Like I give you an example. I remember Bun Bumby's a, a, a dear friend of mine and business partner. Mm-hmm. I remember him telling me somebody grabbed the word trill, and they copyrighted it. Right. And uh, he when he went to go. You know, do copyrighted. They, the guy came up, and turns out the guy uh, it was like, "Look, I I got it. You know, hold it for you when you." That's were ready. what happens. Yeah, he's like, "All I want is just to uh, you know meet you, uh, get a picture and an autograph or whatever." He's like, "Oh, come on, man, no problem. Let's do that." <laughs> Imagine somebody did that for you and was like, "I want a hand job," or you know, <laughs> "I want I, I want Heather Hunter to fuck me for this no, Twitter name." I, I'll I'll just be Hunter Heather. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that's a, it's not that serious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But do you like social media? Um, sometimes, you know. People sometimes, sliding in your DMs? Yeah, you know, I just, yeah, people slide in my But they're really respectful, you know. Nobody shot the, you know. You know, I get some guys that be horny. I get some dick pics, you know. But even the dick pics are kind of respectable. Respectable. They send me, like, icons with roses. <laughs> 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 you know. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, you know, to me, I think, you know, social media can be, Useful and it could be evil at the same time. <laughs> Let me ask something. Did the internet access of porn like mm-hmm. did it affect the prices on uh, you know like VHSs and DVDs? Did it change the game? Oh, it changed the game. Yeah. The internet changed the game for I think forget about porn. I just think in general for any marketing company that you know, uh, mama pop stores or 
you know, but definitely it changed the game for the porn industry. Um, at this point now, it's it's really hard to tell who's who's a porn star and who's a Instagram model. It's sure, very sure. very hard. Sure. Yeah. And it's hard to probably even like like for instance like where's the money made like like I used to like to go to xnxx dot com. Mm-hmm. I think that was the site. Yeah. And and like if I put in Heather Hunter, right, I could find right. a bunch of videos, right. But uh, who's getting paid for that? Xnxx. Like how does that, who, who, who that just, even belong to? Yeah, at this point now, everything's so out there that you know we need residuals. I, it's, it's, it's it's insane. It was like I used to say that no one can exploit you unless you exploit yourself, you know. But what we have let this country do is this AI has just been exploiting us all. <laughs> you know, what I mean. I mean, it's really kind of intense what's going on with technology right now. You know, you grew up around and became friends with a lot of artists. Yes. You know, what's uh, some of your favorite uh, albums? My favorite albums? Well, everybody knows I love Prince. Okay. Um, Did you ever get a chance to meet him? Yes. I really? How'd that happen? Um, I was invited. To his castle? Yeah, to his house. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not asking again. I'm not asking again. You won't give me the pock. <laughs> You're definitely not giving me Prince. Did you? Did you sleep with Prince? Uh, we, no. Okay. Well, <laughs> save it for the doc. Save, save, save it for the doc. Now, how do you get invited to Prince's house, though? Um, I gotta save it for a doc. <laughs> Stop big time in me. Give me somebody. It's not. Said, give me somebody. <laughs> No, I really you know. I, I, yeah. No, really. How did you get? Invited, <laughs> how did you get invited there? Just um, actually from a radio station. I was. I did an interview. I was in Minneapolis performing, and um, I did a interview on a radio show, morning show, mm-hmm. and they asked me the same question: Did you ever meet Prince yet? And I was like, honestly, we know of each other, but, you know, but we never met physically, like. And he was like, wow, I was shocked. And uh, as soon as I'd known it, I got a call. Mm. And it was Next thing you know, to fucking come meet him. Limo was outside. <laughs> Purple rain. <laughs> yeah, who, who, what, what are some mm. of your other artists that you love or, or Oh, albums? my God. So if you, if you think about artists, um, I could truly say Donna Summer, mm. Michael Jackson. Did you ever meet Michael Jackson? Uh, no. Okay, no. I was going to say, it's... Uh, no, I know a few other Jacksons, but not Michael. Um, and Bobby Brown. Oh, I know Bobby. That's that's my boy. Really? That's like my brother. Peace to Bobby. <laughs> okay, you know. Um, but I like all the old school. You know, if you go to, I keep going back to Prince because Prince is my everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, but when it comes to hip hop, I love Jay Z. Talk about Big Daddy Kane. Um, Easy Mo B as producer wise I love Easy Mo B um, there's so many people female MC Light is one of my top female MCs is MC Light I love Little Kim um, I love women that have really distinguished voices you know what I mean mm, mm. Um, but I, just, I have a love for music over, overall mm. yeah now, w- w- was there ever a moment where you were in a room with people that you grew up like loving, and like, holy shit, this is like actually like friends of mine? You know, people you grew up listening to that you be- mm-hmm. that that now became friends of yours. Yeah, and it's that's what's so crazy. It's like if I really look at my my whole life of friendships, I I could truly say at least about seventy percent are celebrities. Like I really grew up knowing a lot of people in the business. Um, it seemed like we just all grew up in the same circle, in the same steps and journeys. Um, but, you know, if I could ever think about being starstruck, like when I saw somebody, is when I was at a convention and I saw Barry White. Mm. I was really starstruck. It was like the first time that I could really say I was like, I was taken back, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, when, when, when it's all said and done, mm-hmm. what do you want to have the Heather, Heather, yeah, me, Heather Hunter legacy to be um like what do you want to be remembered by i want to be remembered by actually remembered by my unconditional love and lust um my symbolism of what i've brought to this to this world when it comes to sexuality and expressing yourself 
um, also just being a courageous, a courageous, brave woman, you know, an African American woman in this day and age, just in general. I just, I just want to leave an impact and sketch myself in history, which I think I've already have, yeah. you know. Um, and I feel blessed and fortunate that I've been able to have these experiences and. You know, it's just been a beautiful journey, and it's, it continues. It keeps yeah. going. And my next biggest creation is coming soon. So, Which is the doc. Uh, no, it's bigger than that. Okay. Yeah. Well, but the doc is big. Yeah, the doc and, is big. So, so yeah. just, just to be clear, the doc is going to be shown, like, in movie theaters. Yeah, in the movie theaters, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So people are going to be able to see it. Right. And then we're going to do a bio, bioptic pic, also a film as well, to that. Um and right now I have a few coffee table books coming out for my photography. I have one book called The Unforgettable. I've been working on it for like about two and a half years. And it's all top American, African-American male celebrities that impacted the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. So like I have everybody from John Sally, um, uh, uh, John Singleton, Wyclef, uh, Malcolm Jamal Warner, um, just different people from different genres that that have impacted and to me that are noble sure and that's another thing that i want to make sure that's on the shelf and that's sketching history yeah sure that's dope you know um we we crossed mm-hmm. over love and lust mm-hmm. no i feel like this you're a great person to break that down like break down what, what is you know like two questions what is love and what is lust in your opinion well to me when it comes to love love is is like no other it's 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 a feeling and it's a power that you sacrifice everything for, you know, um, that you feel that that's worth to sacrifice for. Um, when you love unconditionally, there's no sacrifices. You just do. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel that's the kind of person I, I am. And I think that's why I've been able to do the things I've been able to do in my life and just been blessed and, you know what I mean, and fortunate. Sure, sure. Um, when it comes to lust, lust is a temporary feeling. It's a, it's, it's a desire. Um, it's something that stimulates you for the time, but it's just an illusion. It's just a fantasy. You know what I mean? So you can become that if you want, but you just got to understand that that's just what it is. You know, and desire is powerful too, but it's not as powerful as love. And I think love kind of overcomes everything. Yeah. It's powerful. Have yeah. you ever been to hedonism? Yes, in Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah, I did my show, the peep show out there. Really? Yeah. What the fuck is the peep show? Um, when, I was with, <laughs> when I was with BT, um, the Luke's okay, peep okay, show. Okay, okay, yeah. the Luke's peep show. I yeah. you meant you did a peep show out I, there. Yeah, I was a host for that show for at least about three years. Okay. And um, I interviewed Lady Saw out there, um, a few other other uh, artists out there. It was really nice. He didn't miss a uh, wild place. Man. That's crazy. When I, I saw that that uh, jacuzzi. Yeah. Oh my god. Dudes came up. Let me tell you something, man. I, I remember going to hedonism, and dudes would come up to me, ask me to fuck their wife. Yeah, it's crazy remember, out there. I was just at the bar, gra- yeah. grabbing a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. Dude was like, "Let me talk to you for a second. And I'm from Brooklyn, so I'm like, "Everything okay?" You know, it was like, I, <laughs> I, I was like, kind of, you know, mm-hmm. like feeling like there was a problem, right? And, and, you know. And, and, Move over to the side and you know, ask me like, "Yo, mm-hmm. would you, you know, we, we're looking at you, you know, right? Would it be possible for you to fuck my wife?" And I was like, "Yeah." And it's crazy. I was and in I, a, yeah. at first. I was taken back. Uh-huh. You know, when you really think about it, people, are like, all right, yeah, I fuck your wife, but uh-huh. not real. Like, you know, it's all casual. Yeah, nah. Yeah. It, it threw me for mm-hmm. a loop. It threw me for a loop. Now, when I was in a gift shop in the hotel, it threw me for a loop when. I looked to my right, and there was somebody butt naked with a fanny pack on. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they like buying gum. Yeah. And I'm sitting there like, yo, they butt naked. They got a fanny pack on. Okay. <laughs> now, how comfortable are you with your body? Like, can, oh. you, can you be butt naked on a beach without wearing Oh, my God. I'm, that's the thing about me. I'm, I'm an exhibitionist, and that's natural. Um, I'm very comfortable myself. That is one. That is one. Like, I, you know, you someone, if someone dared me. At least for a lot of money, I could just walk out of here butt naked <laughs> and walk down the street with no problem. Streaking. <laughs> yeah. How do, how do you think one gains that? Um, back to I I claimed my power. I can't explain it. It, you know, 
unfortunate things that happened to me in my, you know, in my life, I, I've turned those into, as you say, weapons. Um, they've become blessings in disguise when it comes to my confidence, comes to my self-esteem, you know. Um, I'm just, I just feel I'm very, how would you say? I'm just very comfortable in every situation, you know. Hey, listen, at the end of the day, you're the only person. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> no, no, you're the only yeah. person that you should be comfortable with. Yeah, you know? I'm just like, a, like you got to be comfortable in your own skin. Right, I'm I very, such we, a free spirit. Yeah, 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 and I think that's special. Yeah. Uh, listen, so you got the doc coming out, mm-hmm. coffee uh, table uh, yes. books, uh, mm-hmm. doing photography in the art gallery. Yes. On Instagram and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Hunter. Hunter Heather, Heather. At Hunter Heather. Stay yeah. connected. Stay connected. Now, is, is there any uh, reunions uh, going on uh, as far as like, uh, you know, you're not doing, like I said, those expos anymore. You no. Have, what was that called? The Legends? The Exotica. They don't do those no more? They like, do. They definitely, they just had one in September. Um, I love Exotica. That was, they're so much fun. I, you know, I think, you know, hopefully... Later in the game, I can come and come out, you know, <laughs> sure, <laughs> but sure. just to come out and party. But you know, yeah, it, it's so much fun. The excitement at those conventions is, woof, yeah. You know, if there's a uh, people listening, you mm-hmm. know, even particularly even women, and uh, you know, they're young or or, or you know maybe stripping or or, or whatever, and, and and kind mm-hmm. of like stuck to not know what to do next, right. Uh, what what's some advice you would give them? Well, definitely the people that really want the advice because, you know, you give advice sometimes to people and they, you know, kind of go to deaf ears. Sure, sure. But, you know, if you're really serious and you're really trying to step out the game, you know, you really got to gotta strip yourself from everything. It, it It doesn't work like, oh, I keep my foot in for a second. You really got to kind of pull back. You got to pull out just so you can find a rebirth, you know, in yourself to find your next step. And you just got to do it, you know. There's no, there's no way of beating the system. You got to face yourself to conquer something different in your life. You know what I mean? Sure. So uh, when it comes to stripping, a lot of the girls, even the adult industry, it's like you don't have to be working for these companies. You know, so many platforms right now where you could build your own brand, you know, and there's so many outlets to make you, that offer that. So I really try to tell them to kind of build themselves, build their brand and keep moving forward, you know, because you could be your own boss at any time. You Mm -hmm. just got to take, you got to really just take control of your life and your business because that's really what it's about. A lot of people don't know business and you got to learn business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gems. Mm -hmm. Now, you you ain't rapping no more, right? I'm not rapping no more. What made you want to rap? Everything to me was experiences I've always wanted to do. And when I put that album out, even that album, I had producers, Scott Storch on it, yeah. White Cleffers, uh, DJ Premier, everybody was on it. Um, all my, my friends came out to support me on it. It was really a homage to hip hop. You know, um, back in the day, I should have, when I was doing Latin Quarter Days, I should have been rhyming then, <laughs> you know? That would have been special. Yeah, uh huh. Now, where, where did you? Uh, where, where, where did you? Did you write your own bars and? Things? No, I didn't write. Um, I actually had some a few girl. Um, two girls were writing for me, and my producer Freedom. He wrote some lyrics as well. Mm. Uh, and I think the track that I did with Scott, his team wrote that as well. We yeah. had Scott on. Scott. Scott's a friend. Mm-hmm. We had Scott on. Do you remember yeah. any of the bars? Do I remember? <laughs> You're really trying to give me spit, huh? No, not spit, <laughs> spit, but I would love to hear... You know, I always say that, you know, if I'm going to spit, you know, I, I always say I'm going to battle somebody. It's going to be in a blowjob. It's not going to be from rhyming, okay? <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Uh-oh. Internet, so on that note... All right. Okay? Hunter, Heather on Instagram, go send her love. Don't send her no dick pics. But if you do, yeah. be nice. Be yeah, nice, okay? Yeah. Be nice. <laughs> be nice. Just say good morning before you send one. Right. <laughs> And check her out. Check the doc out. Listen, all the best to uh, you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm You're the gl- best, Pete. Oh, come on. Yeah. Listen, I look forward to when the doc comes out, you come back. We push that. We're letting people know what's going on. All right, thank uh, you, You sweet. said 2020? Next year. Okay, yeah. damn shit. Time flies. There's a lot of stuff popping up. I just can't, I can't bust those loads yet. Right, yeah. shit. Okay. <laughs> Pun intended. Pun intended. <laughs> Internet, go watch your porno, okay? <laughs> you know why I say that for? I'm going to leave them on this. 
jerking off, masturbating, okay? You know what porno has done? First of all, too much of anything, too much abusing anything is no good. Right. But one thing masturbating has done for, you know, I feel, you know, whether you're a girl or, or a guy, is, you know, sometimes I feel like guy, guys who, like, there's times where, you know, you want to, like, you know, go somewhere or, you know, maybe travel somewhere, meet somebody that you know, like, like, go out of your way to do something because you're horny. Mm-hmm. Like, meaning, like, say, yo, I'll, I'll come out to Long Island. I'll, I'll be there in an hour and a half. Yo, jerk off. You'll, you'll stay home. You know? That's Sometimes true. it's like that. Like, you know? I know. Or, you know, or a guy, like, you know, she, like, I'm going to buy you this car. Jerk off. You, you save yourself $50,000, uh-huh. you know? Well, I'm really like that old school person. I, I guess I, I could, well, I'm a little tomboyish, too. But, like, before I would go out on a date, just like a guy, I would have to masturbate. Just so I'm calm throughout the date. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a good tip. Get rid of the first one. Yeah, you got to get it out. You Ain't know? nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> Internet's masturbate to, to, to release some stress, okay? <laughs> the one and only, the legendary Heather Hunter. Thank See you baby. next episode. <laughs>